How's it going everyone, Wayne the Unknown here, and welcome to another episode of Cosplay Con Talk, where we basically discuss everything pertaining to the cosplay community and conventions. Tonight, we are doing our second episode of convention discussion, and I am joined here by Shasta, founder of Central Oregon Coscon. How are we doing tonight, Shasta? Pretty good. It's that's, good to be here. That's... You sound like you just woke up. No, this is actually just how I always sound. Okay. So, um, to begin, um, what made you uh, come up with the idea for uh, the Central Oregon Coscon? Um, mostly uh, the idea was that I wanted to create a small convention in central oregon mostly because for me i i can't really get around that much i can't go to portland all the time i can't go to medford or even out of state for those bigger conventions so i just wanted to create something that was more local and for um, a smaller community very nice i know you guys were trying to um have your convention last year but with COVID and everything you guys had to push that back yeah, yeah, we did. It was kind of unfortunate, but, you know, it needed to be done. Oh, yeah, no. All the guidelines, but I'm sure you guys are looking forward to um, having it this year. If I'm not mistaken, it'll be in on October 8th? Yeah, October 8th. Nice. Um, I'm sure you're happy for uh, that to finally um, have your con uh, come out for this year and be another con here in Oregon. Yeah, definitely. I... It... It's actually really nice to have one um, in the middle of Oregon. You know, now we have one in Medford, uh, one in Central Oregon, and then, you know, the usual ones in Portland. Nice. So, um, how long have you had the idea of one in a convention uh, in Central Oregon? Um, probably uh, since we were going to start it in 2020, um, since roughly 2018 that's when we that's when i had the idea of starting it very nice um what made you come up uh what and i mean i think i believe this asks us what inspired you to want a, a con another to have another con here in oregon I, again you know just to have something more local to, um for a smaller community here in central oregon and um so um what uh, what what will people be expecting for this year when you guys um, have a, uh, have it officially for your first con? Um, actually, as a smaller con, uh, it's not going to be as extravagant as what everyone's used to. Uh, the ones in Portland, the more known ones, they've been going for you know many years, and they they have it all down. They can get guests in, they can get vendors. Uh, right now, our main focus is. Um, the people who attend cosplaying, just a, a general social interactive gathering of people of the same uh, interest. Very nice. Um, and I've actually noticed, I've taken a look on your guys' um, website, they actually got a few uh, guest cosplayers. Mind um, sharing who those will be? Yeah, so I... I do have a couple here. Um, the first one is um, actually someone very local. Uh, excuse me if I'm actually pronouncing her username wrong. It's uh, Super Misor. Uh, she's actually really cool. Um, uh, local, she does all her own props. And then uh, a couple other ones, uh, the Faustian Spider. Um, She's actually going to be one of the head judges in the cosplay contest, and then the Fencing Fox cosplay, who also makes their own cosplays, and who's also going to be a judge um, for this year's cosplay contest. Very nice. And um, where exactly um, in Central Oregon will this con be located so people um, who will know where to go? Uh, this is actually going to be located in Redmond, Oregon. It's um, in the Deschutes County area, it, mostly because there's a venue there. It's the Deschutes County Fair and Expo Center. It's really large. Uh, they actually have three other, uh, two other buildings uh, for 
uh, gatherings that they usually hold it at, but ours is in the, I believe, the Metolius building, the, the smallest of the two. Uh, but there's actually a lot of open space, a lot of places that people in cosplay can take pictures. Um, and I think it's going to be really nice, actually, that there's a lot of open space for everyone. Well, I'm sure a lot of people are looking forward to it and exciting to go to a, another con. Now, um, how much will tickets be for uh, this con? Uh so right now for uh, online, it is $15. It's going to be $15 all the way up until the day of the con. And at the door, it is 20 That is, that's not bad at all. That's fairly reasonable, especially for a first time uh, small con. Yeah, of course. Most of the uh, funding for the con is just uh, from myself, the people who are running it, uh, obviously from tickets and from vendor fees, but everything else is mostly just uh, out of pocket. And we don't really have any uh, uh, supporters, you know, like um, any companies around. Uh, we did at one point, however, with COVID, most of them, unfortunately, they did go out of business or they had to defer their funds elsewhere. But I imagine once this, you know, once people hear about this con, there's that possible chance of getting more um, sponsors and everything, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's what we're hoping for. Um, so care to share the team behind this convention, like giving a little shout outs um, and everything? Actually, uh, we prefer not to because at, uh, most people who are uh, working at the con, they don't have their own social medias or it is private. That is completely understandable. But I imagine it's nice to have that help to get this con all set up and everything. Yeah, it's a relatively small group, but we are all pretty dedicated to, at least for uh, this year, we, we don't know about... Uh, uh, next year or the year after, we, but we really just want to get this year under our belt um, and just see how it goes. Well, again, I'm sure a lot of people are looking forward to it. I know myself, I know I won't be able to this year, but if you guys have this con again next year, I'll definitely be going to check it out for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, we definitely hope to get one next year if we can. Everything great, you know, you know. Big things have small beginnings, so, you know, I'm definitely uh, looking forward to see how this con goes for you guys this year. Uh, definitely. <laughs> We're pretty excited, too. Now, prior to this con, um, have you gone to any other cons that were, like, inspiration for this one? Oh, yeah. Uh, I've gone recently, actually, before COVID. Um, I went to Annie Medford Con. Um, their first opening, actually, um, I believe it was 2019 was their first time. Uh, anyways, uh, that con actually was one of the bigger inspirations, mostly because of how uh, small of a community it was held in and how everything was put together on a lower end uh, budget. Um. If you don't mind me asking, uh, what kind of budget would you got, did you guys have for this con to get it all started, if that's okay to share? Um, actually, it's it's fine. Um, the budget was actually, I guess it was, we were trying to, we were not trying to cut quarters per se, but we are trying to at least find more affordable options. Uh, if we are going to do it next year, we probably will look into a different venue because holding it at a fairgrounds, even in one building, can be quite expensive. So that's why we didn't um, prolong the hours past original hours that we already have. Um, but our funding was pretty small. But for now, we hope, again, in the future, we can work on that. Nice. And uh, I've noticed your uh, your guys's um, logo. It's um, a little chibi anime character, I believe, in a poncho. What was the inspiration for the um, logo for Central Oregon CosCon? Um, hmm. the, well, the inspiration for that was mostly to have something that um, represented uh, the place that our convention was going to be held at. Uh, Central Oregon is a high desert, um, so 
uh, underneath the poncho, they have a little bit of a, a sweater, um, jeans, you know, hiking boots. Uh, because in our area, we have a lot of trails, a lot of hiking, a lot of outdoors. But it's also, um, we also want to be more a part of the Pacific Northwest too. So the poncho was because of the rain that we get in the Pacific Northwest as well. I mean, I think honestly, it looks it it looks like a really um, well made logo. Who was the um, artist behind that? I actually did that one myself. I actually organized all the designs for nice. the convention. So imagine um, being the founder. You've definitely put a lot of hours into this to make this happen. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Especially with over the course of like three years since you said you've been started wanting to do this since 2018 yeah it's been really difficult especially in a smaller community um a lot of people who are into uh cosplay anime are usually of the younger variety in our community so we've just trying to uh had give them a place to come and gather and socialize because you know when I was in high school and middle school, I couldn't travel to those places, so it's nice to just bring it here. Or people, yeah, no, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. If if there's a con in area that someone can like easily walk to and not have to, you know, spend the money or try to get a hotel to travel to, I think that's really good. And I'm again, I'm sure a lot of people here in Oregon, I, you know, here down in Southern Oregon and up near Portland, are looking forward to seeing this new con because, again, you know. Anytime there's a new con, I, I know a lot of people are going to want to check it out and see what it's like. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, but I hope uh, everyone doesn't have too high of an expectation because, again, we're a smaller con. It's a small community. It's not going to be as elaborate as, you know, your bigger cons. Oh, no, I, I, can, I can understand that again, you know, small con, first time. And... On, and it sounds like, you know, um, this is something you've been, wanted, again, wanted to do for a very long time, especially, like you said, since you can't always travel to these other cons and having this con at, like, in your hometown will be a really uh, good thing. And plus, it's a really good start. And, you know, especially with all these guests you're having, I imagine, you know, having these guests, people will say, oh, this, this seems like a really good con. We should check this con out and everything. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Um, anything else you want, uh, anything else you like to let people know about this con and like what, con, what, uh, they maybe what they'll potentially be looking forward to when it happens? Yeah. So what, right now what we have, uh, for sure is going to be a cosplay contest, um, that's going to be going on. It, it has three parts to it. It has, uh, a maid cosplay, uh, and then bought cosplay, and then partially made and partially bought. Uh, we're going to have uh, a couple more cosplay guests than what it says on our website. We're just finalizing that. Uh, we're st still looking for uh, last-minute artist vendors, um, people who want to volunteer. I highly encourage people to volunteer because, you know, the community is really what makes a con happen. Oh, I, I agree. And I'm sure you guys have been going left and right trying to find um, guests because I know like in a couple more months, the con will be coming soon. So I imagine there's been a lot of time crunching to find people who are uh, wanting to be featured guests. Yeah, of course. Uh, we might not have any guests uh, from, you know, popular anime, voice actors or anything like that, but we will definitely have local community based uh, cosplay guests and some community run panels as well. So if any attendees want to make their own panel, uh, a form will be open soon for that. Yes, and I'll be definitely making sure to um share this where i can as well to let people know about it um now do you guys have like contact information so if anyone wants to be a guest or a panelist they can con uh, reach you guys and ask yeah definitely so they can either go on to our facebook page it's central oregon coscon and it's same for our, our instagram as well um you can always directly message 
the page or you can email us at centraloregoncoscon at gmail.com. Yes, uh, it's, and I'll make sure to put that in the description below so people can check that out. Um, now, I'm also pretty sure it's nice to um, have people like um, Adam Medford and Metalark uh, back you guys up as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, we actually might not be able to attend um, Metalark or Adam Medford uh, this year, but they are always welcome to have their booth in Archon if they wish. Oh, I'm sure they would be like I'm sure they would really like that. So it's definitely a good way to have local support, which I'm sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. You, which I'm sure is nice to have uh, for your con. Yeah, yeah. Convention supporting conventions is always nice. Now, how does it feel to be? Because um, I usually know people who founded cons are like you know up there like, like in their you know older. How does it feel to be like the youngest uh, founder for a con? Uh, <laughs> it's it's interesting it's hard to it's hard to wrap your head around it sometimes you know but i'm sure again it's it, it feels nice to you know let people out there know that you're you're you've again i'm sure you put a lot of effort into this and i'm sure there's been a lot of sleepless nights trying to get this all ready for when it does happen Oh, oh yeah, definitely. Especially, I'm especially not going to get any sleep the week before the convention. <laughs> yeah, that's that's totally understandable. Um, so, um, what made you guys uh find these uh the guests that you guys are having for your con? Um, so the ones on our website, um, those ones are actually very local to Oregon. They've been in Oregon. They've been to Oregon conventions a lot. Um, mostly what we were looking for at first was people who were part of our community, either in the Pacific Northwest or Central Oregon. Um, uh, people who are very engaging, friendly, um, and just in general has a little bit of experience with uh, hosts hosting or being a guest at previous conventions nice and um how long have you guys had um so what made you want to make the website like who was behind um the website to create for the con so people can check it out on your instagram and everything <laughs> the website actually i did create it myself as well nice yeah <laughs> so this is like i so this is technically like your baby in a way yeah, I I work on uh, uh, the graphics and the website and uh, most of the organizing, uh, but I do obviously have people uh, help me out with everything as well. Well, definitely a big um, shout out to your uh, team. How many, um, if, if if again, if this is a catch, how many members consist of your team? Um, consistently, uh, including me, we have five. Um, not all of them will be able to attend. Um, hopefully I'll have some of them, um, during the day of the convention, but most of them will help me set up prior to the convention as well. Now, um, uh, with the suits at County Fairground, I'm sure that's, I'm sure it's pre I've actually looked at the pictures of the fairground. That's a fairly good sized place for a first time con. Oh yeah, it, it definitely is. Um, I believe uh the whole fairgrounds will be empty on that day so people can walk around and take pictures and just peruse um however it is right next to an rv park as well so people have to be mindful that there are people um you know camping um but other than that you know they can just walk around and have fun oh no that's like probably one of the most important thing about having con is also you know being safe as well, which I'm sure is going to be the main priority for this con. Oh, yeah, definitely. Now, um, trying to see here. Um, <laughs> any special uh, events you'll uh, have during the con, aside from the cosplay contest? Other than the cosplay contest, that's the only one that we've planned. Um, for this year, we were hoping to have uh, uh, another panel, uh, but sadly that guest had to drop out for this year due to the COVID. Um, but hopefully, again, we'll have some guests and um, attendees who want to make their own panels. 
Nice. Now, I know this may be early to ask, but um, what do you see in the foreseeable future um, for this con if it goes the way you're hoping to go for it to go? Ah, uh, well, uh, it's really an uncertainty right now. <laughs> we just hope this year will go well so we can plan, hopefully, for another year. Uh, if we do... I uh, decide to do it another year, maybe something that's a little bit more uh, less open, you know, uh, like a hotel or just, just something that's not a fairgrounds. Because the I, I don't know if you have seen the pictures the inside of the building itself. It is fairly open. Yeah, I know. I've I've seen that, and a hotel would be another uh, good idea because I know quite a few cons. Um if they when they do run a second time they usually like like you say go to a bigger venue so that'd be pretty um pretty cool to see honestly a much you know bigger space in a, in a way too so. mm, yeah definitely um it, it's just a little hard uh, again to find venues in our area because most people uh like hotels and other venues don't know what a convention is so hopefully after this first year um we can uh, introduce the community to conventions some more nice and i'm sure that was pretty nice of the Deschutes county fairground and the city of redmond to um host this con for you guys Oh yeah, it's it was really nice of them. Um, actually, when I was talking to one of the representatives, um, one of them actually has been to Comic Con, which was really nice. Actually. Hey, that's always good to have someone on the inside who's you know familiar oh, yeah, with definitely. this. Um. So, yeah. how did you go about asking to shoot uh, the shoots County Care fa to shoot County Fairground, um, to host this con? Uh, actually, we met up in person and we sat down with them. We're like, hey, we have a community run event that we wanted to host. And we explained to them um, what a convention was and how it worked. Um, and they were like, oh, uh, yeah, they were totally down with it. And then we just um, started, you know, filling out the contracts from there. Nice. So I know uh, last year when you guys were wanting to do this con, um, what was the plan for that con? Was it the same for this year or was it a little bit different? It, it was a little bit different. Um, we got into contact with some voice actors. Um, however, they couldn't attend um, because of COVID. Um, and so when it was getting to that time where we had to decide whether to continue or postpone we decided to postpone other uh panels that we had planned were going to be a lip sync um cosplay contest you know when you sort of like karaoke but you're not you know actually kind of, singing kind of like what anna medford did um back in yeah. 2019 that's yeah sort of like that that's really cool again i think I think what you guys are doing, in all honesty, is really good for the for the not just for you know the city of Oregon, but also for the cosplay community as well. Especially those who are new to cosplay, and with the COVID restrictions being lifted, it'll be nice to go to a con and just you know interact with people, meet new people, and also you know they'll be able to talk about this con as well and let their and let people know about it too. Because that's I think that's probably the like the best way is to you know let people know about this con oh yeah definitely word of mouth can uh, do wonders with a smaller convention no well, definitely um before we uh end this real quickly um any advice personally that you would like to give for anyone who's considering on wanting to have like their like uh, come up with a con like have their very first like run their first con <sighs> Um, mostly to do research not only on other conventions, bigger conventions that are successful, but also uh, consider where you live and what venues are available to you, what's your community, and how you can cater to them. That's some really sound advice, and I imagine you did your research left and right to, um, to come up with this idea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see here. I think I got one more question to ask. 
Um, so as the founder of this uh, convention, um, what's it, what's it been like in general? You know, just like thinking, you know, you wanted to come up with this con, uh, especially again, like I said, like you said, for, you know, since it's not easy to always get a con, um, how's it, how's it felt in the past couple of years, um, ever since you came up with this idea for this convention? Um, exciting. Um, when I first came up with a deal, it was very exciting to me that I could offer this to my community. Um, but, uh, you know, as it goes on, when you're planning, it, it does become a little stressful. Um, but it was really nice to have my team that I work with to lead on because they take care of a lot of uh, fine details for me. Um, I, it just in general, <laughs> as it's been going on, I've been really just relying on the people who have been su supporting me. Well, that's good that you have a good team to help you and, you know, be there for you when you like need because um, i'm sure um having the having the team and having the people who probably have ex experienced this kind of stuff is it's good to have yeah it is it's always nice to have people uh you can fall back on nice um so any last minute uh thing you'd like to let people know about this con before you know right when it went before it happens uh, oh uh the people who have been asking me about parking uh the parking is free there's a lot of parking uh it is wheelchair accessible and there is it's about a 10 10 minute drive from the nearest hotel and restaurant that's that's really good having a con, uh, having a con near those areas and it being wheelchair accessible is probably like the best thing because not many conventions especially first time conventions will have access to that Oh yeah, it's it's really nice to you know make a convention that's accessible to everyone. Oh. Um, and real quick, we uh, will have lanyards that people can pick up um, for social distancing. Uh, they are color coded: green, yellow, and red. And we'll explain more um, on our Instagram. That is really that's a really good idea. I've was. Um... In a group I was in, um, some people were talking about that, how con should, you know, nowadays should have that. I've not seen a con have that. So having a social distancing lanyard is a really good idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, I understand that a lot of people are shy when they come to conventions or they don't want to interact with people as much. So these will really help those people who just want to, you know, observe. That's again that's a real because like you said not not people want to be touched or talked to or hugged or whatever so having that you know that that safety um lanyard is a really good thing that's definitely some good uh convention and safety awareness advice yeah definitely it, we try to make everyone feel comfortable comfortable and welcome that's always good now um when is this uh convention again and where it it's october 8th at the Deschutes County Fair and Expo Center in Redmond, Oregon. Gotcha. And all the information for that will be in the description below, along with a link to their Instagram page, uh, Facebook, and their website. So I'll be making sure to uh, let people know that as well. Again, Shasta, thank you for coming on to talk about your uh, convention, Central Oregon CosCon. Looking forward to seeing how it goes this year and also wishing you the best of luck too for your first con. Yeah, thank you. We can't wait to get started. Again, I am Wayne the Unknown. Thank you for listening, everyone. And until next time, thank you for watching.